I'm Kultskis. This is only a simple building instruction video that I've made for a couple of my subscribers. In it I will be building my small automatic Lego shooting mechanism. I should warn you that this shooting mechanism is still a little bit of a work in progress. There are two things which I'm really not happy with at the moment. Basically they both come down to reliability. The reliability of this mechanism is not very good. There's basically two causes for that, which I will talk about a little bit later on in the video. Okay, I'm starting to build the right side here, half-sized uh, lift beam to a corner, 3 by 3 And we insert that part at the end. By the way, that tanned colored pin, uh, in this video you can't really see the use of that, but that's where I attach my linear actuator to elevate the gun up and down. So here I'm uh, constructing the, the bow uh, limbs, one of the bow limbs. with two seven length axles if I'm correct. Nearly done this with this part here. There is uh, one of those connectors which uh, has a pin on one side and a hole on the other side. Very useful element. And here we have a simple uh, lift arm, two length with an axle and a normal hole. Okay, that was the right side of the mechanism, now the left side. Basically it's the same thing. Got, one, got two of these uh, four length axles with a stopper. To keep this all in place we have two uh, three length half sized lift beams. And then it's time to insert the gears. The, um, the force of the of the mechanism is geared down by a worm gear and uh, one of those uh, large gears. The part uh, where I am holding my thumb, that's the part where the motor uh, is installed. Not actually showing that in the video, but uh, it should be pretty obvious. Now we need to make the other bow limb.
then we have some final fittings to attach. Again, the same element as on the other side, inserted in the same spot. And then we come to the crucial element of this whole mechanism, which is the pulling back mechanism, or the pulling back element. And that's a half lift beam three sized and then a half lift beam four sized. At length 3 axle and then a 1 length spacer which that's the part where the pullback wire is attached to and two half size 3 length lift beams That finishes the left side. Now we are constructing the magazine. So please let me take a moment to talk about one of the problems with this mechanism. One of the problems is with the magazine, uh, as you see it here. The problem is that when the bowstring gets released, the force is such that a lot of the force spills over to the, to the projectiles in the magazine. And uh, they can shift around, they can get stuck, and when they fall down, they can sometimes not land properly. So that is a problem, uh, because um, it, it, it affects the reliability. It means that, well, I've actually, actually I've never seen uh, a projectile getting stuck, but I've seen projectiles uh, landing crookedly, so that when the bowstring hits the projectile, it doesn't shoot out properly. It shoots out with less force, or it doesn't shoot out at all, which is of course horrible. What I would really like to do, and I, I so I've tried to remedy the situation by placing a pin in the middle, but it really isn't, isn't enough to fix the problem. So what I would really like to do is make a rubber band powered magazine, just like on my other mechanisms. Because the reliability of a rubber band powered mechanism is much better. The force of the rubber band is, is more than enough to keep the projectiles in place even when one gets shot out of the barrel. The problem is of course that this is a very small mechanism and I'm really um, having a hard time trying to, f to, to fit everything together. And there's just one or two studs. I, ne I need one or two studs extra space to make it work. So I am having a hard time finding that one or two extra slots of space. Um, however, I'm sure that, that in the end, like, like always, it, it will work. But I just need a little bit of extra time tinkering with it before I find uh, the right solution. So now we got all the parts assembled of the magazine, and uh, it's time to so it's time to put them all together and uh, finish the magazine.
Okay, that finishes the magazine. It looks like this. Nothing fancy. Now we are going to make some fittings for the middle of the shooting mechanism. Basically this part of the mechanism is the bottom. It's where the projectiles um, rest and where the bowstring is uh, fixed behind. We got this, uh, this part which I'm attaching now. That's the part where the bowstring is fixed behind before it gets released. And that's the axle, the bowstring gets fixed behind. Okay, now we got just got to make these very simple parts, two of them. They are the side of the barrel, or the, the side of the start of the barrel, more or less. Okay. So now we have all the separate parts of the mechanism assembled and it's time to put together the whole mechanism. Here goes the bottom. And the other side of the barrel. And then it's time to put together the two sides of the mechanism, of the shooting mechanism. Almost done. Now the magazine. Then an uh, axle that connects the top part, and again, we got these uh, two sized uh, lift beams with an axle hole in them. Two of those. And finally, a pin that helps uh, keeping the projectiles in place, which goes in at the top. So this is th so this part is really what I dislike about this uh, mechanism. It should replace that. And time to put in the rubber band. I'm just going to do one to show you how it uh, how it works. You should really do that with a piece of wire. It makes it much more easy. The other problem with this mechanism is the rubber band, as you, which you see here. The problem with the rubber band is actually that it's not at attached to anything. It just goes stra straight through the center of the mechanism. The problem with that is that it gets very unstable. It tends to either pull the right or the left bow limb. Because for some reason, when it starts pulling one bow limb, then the resistance pulling that bow one bow limb grows less and then it becomes easier to keep pulling that bow limb instead of equally pulling the other bow limb. So what, what, what tends to happen is you see one bow limb moving and the other bow limb staying fixed which is of course not what it was meant to do and also um, the force 
uh, get crooked that way. Uh, the force should be straight out linear, but if only one bo bow limb is moving, uh, the, the the force is uh, is not is not straightforward. I have a couple of ideas how to fix that, but I'm I'm really a little bit sad because I thought I had found the perfect solution, placing the the rubber band inside the mechanism because it looks really really ni nice like this. So this is probably the hardest part of building this mechanism. It's making the bowstring. And that's probably the hardest part for most people, because you probably have some experience building with Lego. And probably you, you have less experience tying knots. And that's basically what this is. To make a good bowstring, you need to know which knots to use and how to tie them. And that's, and that's basically all. Of course, it's very important to make a bowstring the right length. Uh, but when you got the right length, the only thing that's important is tying the right knot. And the knot I'm using uh, is called the Wurgstrik, but that's a, a Dutch name. I've searched about two hours trying to find the English name for this knot, but I couldn't find it. So that's a, a little bit of a problem. Uh, I found a knot that is very similar, which is called the Poacher's Knot, but it's not exactly the same. However, if you use the Poacher's Knot, it should work just as well. Um, I've, in, I've inserted a picture here to uh, show you how to make the Wurgstrik. And if somebody knows the proper English name for this knot, then I would be very much obliged if you would tell me. Because this is the second time in a video that I was unable to give the proper English name. So, it's not very difficult to make a bowstring, but the first time it probably takes you a, a little bit of time to make it. Uh, it took, I think, my first bowstring took me about two hours to make. But that was just because I had to figure out a lot of things, like uh, how to uh, how to close the knot properly because it's but what's, what's difficult is not making the knot but getting the knot in the right place that's what takes some practice uh, and you will you will uh, you will be able to do that just uh, start practicing and maybe you get lucky and do it in the first time because nowadays i can make a bowstring in about 10 minutes if, if you're lucky the first time it will probably take you an hour to make a bowstring but if you're unlucky it could easily take you two hours like i did but please don't let that stop you. It's really not that hard, it just takes some time. Another thing uh, I should mention is that the fabric I use to make my bowstrings, uh, which is nylon, which is also important, because nylon doesn't doesn't stretch, which is very important uh, with a bowstring, because you, want, you don't want the knots to shift, but you also don't want the material to stretch, both for the same reason, you want the bowstring to remain the same length. And also nylon is a very strong material, so it will handle uh, the force quite easily. And also the wear and tear of shooting it over and over should be no problem. I've, I've never had a string of nylon break in one of my shooting mechanisms. You may also be interested in these two other videos. One is about my Mark VI LEGO tank and the other is a general video about LEGO shooting mechanisms. And please don't forget to like and subscribe. That is, if you actually like the video.